In mid-January 474, Leo I the Thracian died and left the throne in the hands of his young grandson Leo II. However, Leo II didn't live very long and he ended up dying in mid-November of the same year, at the age of seven. So you might think there's really not much to say about Leo II, and you'd be right. However, there are a few things that I would like to point out because I feel like this gives us a bit of an opportunity to take stock and to figure out exactly why the reign of Zeno, Leo II's father, ended up being so tumultuous. Well, my proposal is that Leo II was actually the key to domestic tranquility at the Byzantine court. And for this, I have zero evidence since zero evidence exists. This is just a supposition based on human nature. And the reason why I think he was the key to domestic tranquility, quite simply, is that he was the one thing which united the Empress Verena, who was a Thracian and a very ambitious noblewoman, and Zeno, the Asarian outsider who had come in to help Leo rid himself of the Germanic influence of Aspar and others. And of course, I'm assuming here that Aspar really was a representative of a Germanic faction, which I have some doubts about, but for the most part in these videos, I haven't gone into that. At any rate, um, another reason why I think Leo II may have been the key to domestic tranquility is that he was someone whose ancestry was divided evenly between the Thracian people of the Balkans, who provided the bulk of the soldiers during this period, and the new Asarian people who had come in from the east, uh, represented by his father, and who uh, now composed a, another substantial portion of the Roman or Byzantine army. Um, so between his role as a grandson who united um, a family and his role as someone who united the most important ethnicities of his empire, I feel like Leo II actually had a large symbolic role to play and that a lot of hopes rested upon him and what he would hopefully grow up to become. When he died, um, that of course did leave some problems. When he died, he ended up leaving the throne to his father Zeno, who he had named co-emperor earlier. This coin here actually pictures young Leo II with his father Zeno as co-emperors. Um, and uh, Zeno was not someone who had any Thracian ancestry, and he was an Asarian outsider. His original name had been Terracicidus. So we'll talk a lot more about Zeno in due time. But at any rate, I think it's interesting to wonder how different the reign of Zeno would have been had Leo II survived. Would Basiliscus still have launched a revolt? Would Verena still have been scheming against her son-in-law Zeno? I think probably not. Um, it's possible that they would have been content to work as powers behind the scene on behalf of young Leo II. And I don't know that um, the army or a lot of the palace guards would have really brooked much intrigue at the expense of a seven-year-old emperor. So um, I think that a lot of people would have had to be on much better behavior. But again, this is all speculation, and it's more or less a what if. I really wanted to say something kind of interesting about an emperor who, um, well, is a minor in more ways than one. Anyway, that is Leo II, and now we can get on to the more interesting reigns of Zeno and Basiliscus and Anastasius and all of those people.